call the UREF. Now, I don't know if they're going between chains. I mean, it's, it's just that you can tell the difference between a UREF and any other kind of data that goes across. You yeah, see, they've got a data thing here, but they don't have capabilities. That's a problem. So, um, so, uh, I mean, the, the whole e rights model um, Okay, uh, I mean, uh, the uh, does, I, I guess I, th I thought that was supposed to Pass capabilities across VATS. Right. I'm just trying to figure out where that fits in with the, the inner blockchain stuff. Well, we can certainly think of a node as a VAT, right? Yeah, I can't figure out whether all of our chain is one VAT or you can make lots of, of VATs um, inside of our chain. I don't think a node is a VAT because the nodes all sort of conspire to make one big computing soup. Well, um... VAT, VATs are mutually distrustful. So, and the, and the, well, our chain nodes sort of trust each other and sort of don't. They don't really trust each other. But the but the, the what you get when you stick a bunch of our chain nodes together is one big computing infrastructure. Right, but I think you can also consider the nodes as, as individual vats, and I, I, no, I I think that'll be important in decentralizing the blockchain later. Uh, is the considering the ambient nature of bats or nodes. Um, but that's another, you know, that's uh, so they're saying that TP is like light client authentication. Hmm. I guess the Agoric folks have coded this up to some extent. How'd they do it? I haven't gotten this part of it running yet. Mm -hmm. Cosmic swing side.
Well, <laughs> it's somewhere in here. Because <laughs> this is the cosmic swing, swing set is the repository where they're, they, swing set is the um, agoric sort of implementation of their object capability stuff of connecting VATs together. And then um, this cosmic swing set is when they look at the whole of the um, Cosmos blockchain as one VAT. Then you can connect it to local VATs and stuff like that. So uh, what's the part you're working on again? Oh, um, I am working on making it run on a small JavaScript runtime instead of the V8 JavaScript runtime. Oh, I see. What do you gain by running in a small JavaScript runtime? Trust. Oh, and uh, um, it makes it, it's more likely that it's deterministic. The um, V8 has a just-in-time compiler and stuff, and so you, you they're going to have metering, and so you want to make sure that uh, when you run the same computation at five different places, they all uh, crap out at the same place if they run up a gas. And if the, the JIT kicks in, you know, at different times on different computers, then they might run out of gas at different places. The cost accounting stuff has to be deterministic. Everybody has to agree how much gas the computation takes. What did I miss here? The cost accounting has to be deterministic. That's why V8 is not really good for blockchain contribution computations. Not to mention just V8's a scary amount of code to trust. The, um, the XS engine is like less than 10,000 lines of C code, much less. It's a uh, Oh, sorry, 70,000 lines. It's all very straightforward, though. I wonder what that compares to in the V to in the V8. I think V8 a million lines or so. Oh my goodness. Well, yeah, that relatively speaking, this is tiny. Yeah. You can read all this code in a week. I mean, they had some problem with, I can't remember. Um, anyway, they had some function that did this before that, and I couldn't actually fix it, but it was pretty easy to find where the relevant code is. You just, you know. Um, these are the num whoops, number functions, you know. Uh, anyway, it's just a bunch of C code. 
It's got a few weird macros in it stuff, but. Okay, so if I want to check for. Okay, 101, not 196. I wonder what um, Kent is up to. I don't see many of these assigned to him. What's was it, What's this about Kent leaving? Really? Gary? Are you there, Gary? Yeah, but I'm in my garage. Uh, yeah, uh, Greg announced in the, the last uh, debriefing uh, that that Kent had decided to leave the the blockchain space, and uh, Greg said that they had found uh, you know they don't think they can replace Kent, but they found someone who who can. Uh, start to pick up the slack, but he didn't say who it was. I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if it's Isaac. I, I don't think Christian Williams is a programmer, is he? I think he does, can, he does program, yeah. Yeah, as I recall, Greg explained uh, Kent's reasoning as the blockchain space had become just too much about the money and profit, and uh, and he was he wasn't into that. And uh, I I kind of wondered if that's why Greg is is hammering. Um, climate change right now as hard as he is to to try to motivate some of the uh, some of the programmers who who may you know not have that strong a, an interest in the space all right i think i'm going to run along guys Well, thanks for joining, Dan. Sure. Well, I'm going to uh, uh, take off now unless uh, we have something else. Yep.
Uh, I also probably have to leave, and uh, yeah, we can talk later. Great, thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Nice to see you again. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Bye, have a nice day. Bye. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Oops.